Welcome to our hairdressing and barbering level 2, health and safety courses. Topic 1. Control of substances hazardous to health. Introduction. This session looks at the control of substances hazardous to health regulations 2002. Employers of hair and beauty salons or barbers shops are required by law to make an assessment of possible exposure to all the hazardous substances used in their salon. These substances can take many forms, and in hair and beauty businesses we think of them as 1. Chemicals 2. Products containing chemicals 3. Fumes, dusts and vapors How are things harmful? The purpose of COSH is to protect people against health risks from hazardous substances used at work. COSH covers virtually all substances that have a potential for causing harm to people's health. Although hair products used in salons are not generally thought to be hazardous, they may contain substances that are covered by the COSH regulations. Substances can be harmful in the following ways. By contact, with the surface of the skin or eyes. By absorption, through the skin, either directly, or from contact with contaminated surfaces or clothing. Through inhalation, breathing in substances in the salon atmosphere. Or ingestion, either directly, or from contamination. Is it a risky business? Hairdressers, for example, are at high risk when it comes to skin problems. Up to 70% of hairdressers will suffer a form of skin damage at some stage in their career. Therefore, your employer must accurately identify any potential hazards in the workplace and take action to control those risks to your health. Hair products should not present a risk to the health and safety of stylists or their clients, if used sensibly, following the manufacturer's instructions. You can avoid being a part of the 70% statistics, by following the instructions and the training that your employer has provided. The majority of risks involved with the chemicals that you use daily in your work, are easily avoided. Risk Assessment An employer will start their risk assessment by considering the following. 1. What products are used? 2. What is the potential for any of these products to cause harm? 3. What is the chance of exposure occurring during work routines? 4. How much are people exposed to, for how long, and how often? 5. Can the exposure be prevented in some way? They will then create a written record of this assessment for their keeping and for staff information. Control the exposure. As a general rule, wherever safer products are available, they should always be used. But, in situations where this is not possible, then the employer must take the following steps to control the exposure. 1. Provide ventilation, possibly through mechanical extraction. 2. Only use the product at the recommended strength. 3. Clear up splashes or spillages immediately. 4. Reseal containers immediately after use. 5. Provide safe storage. 6. Use personal protective equipment. You can help. Control Method 1. Provide ventilation, possibly through mechanical extraction. Some products such as powder bleach, or bleach activators, are made up from very small particles. When they are mixed with chemicals, they can often resist dampening, and can easily be released as a fine powder into the air. This is potentially hazardous, because if these are inhaled, they can cause breathing problems, particularly for asthmatic people from the fumes and particles they release. This potential hazard can easily be controlled by making sure that these products types are mixed together carefully, and slowly, in a well-ventilated area. Somewhere with access to fresh air is ideal, so open a window, or turn the extractor fan on. You can help. Control Method 2. Only use the product at the recommended strength. You should never mix products unless it is recommended by the manufacturer. For example, you wouldn't dream of mixing a perm solution for lightened hair, with a perm solution for resistant hair, and then applying it to your client. And that is because you would have no control, or idea of the final effect. This goes for other products too. 
If you have to dilute hydrogen peroxide, say if you only have 12% and you really need 3%, it should only done as the very last resort. Where possible, always use the strength for the task as recommended by the manufacturer. This will avoid accidents and you won't be taking any unnecessary risks. You can help. Control method 3. Clear up splashes or spillages immediately. You provide services to your clients every day and typically, many of these services will involve the use of chemicals. Even the most careful technician will eventually spill some product whilst mixing, or accidentally drop a blob of color from their brush, onto the floor. These are routine, daily occurrences and you will remember the last time it happened to you. However, you need to ensure that you turn your mishaps into safe, professional practices. Always clear up your spillages and splashes immediately and be prepared in the future. Always keep a cloth at hand in your trolley, ready for the next time it happens to you. You can help. Control method 4. Reseal containers immediately after use. This is another common mistake, particularly when you are busy. Always make a point of 1. Screwing the top back on to chemical products after you use them. 2. Screwing the top back on to permanent color after you have dispensed the amount you need from the tube or bottle. 3. Resealing the packet on the powder bleach, so it doesn't get spilt. 4. Resealing the perm solution or neutralizer, so it doesn't lose its strength. 5. Replace the pump dispenser on the shampoos and conditioners after you top them up. You can help. Control method 5. Provide safe storage. Always remember to work in an organized way. Everything has a place and everything in its place. Get into the habit of using the salon storage, in the same way that you use the equipment. Only use the equipment for the purpose that it is intended. Most people try to find shortcuts, and quicker ways of doing things in their work. Sometimes it works, and great. You've just saved yourself another 5 minutes so that you can take a break. But more often than not, people choose to do things because they are lazy, and this often ends in a disaster. Always put things back in their proper place. It saves time in the long term and doesn't create a hazard for someone else. You can help. Control method 6. Use PPE. The simplest and most effective way of preventing you from being harmed is by wearing the personal protective equipment that your employer has provided. Wear your disposable gloves and apron or tunic for 1. All chemical services, coloring, bleaching and highlighting. It will prevent your skin coming into contact with chemical substances. Always wear your disposable gloves for 2. Shampooing and conditioning hair. It will prevent you from developing skin conditions like contact dermatitis. More information. Are professional cosmetic products safe? Yes, cosmetic products are safe when used according to manufacturers' instructions and recommendations. Manufacturers are required by law to supply health and safety information on any products used in hairdressing salons that contain potentially hazardous substances. Your employer will keep product safety data sheets for all the potentially hazardous products that you use. However, the information can be quite complex and expressed in technical language. Chemical Safety Data Sheets Manufacturers are required by law to provide information about the products they supply to the hair and beauty industry. This information is in the form of product safety data sheets. These provide information on chemical products that help users of those chemicals to make a risk assessment. They describe the hazards that the chemical presents, and give information on handling, storage and emergency measures in case of accident. Now using the related document for the assessment, answer the following questions.
well done. In the session, you covered the potential hazards associated with caution salons or barbers shops, i.e. the risks associated with chemicals through 1. Contact 2. Absorption 3. Inhalation 4. Ingestion